So in this video, we're going to pretty much convert what I've been using, the standard rectangular star link dish with its mount and very biggish profile. It comes with a standard Starlink router. I've got the Ethernet adapter so I can connect it into my Unify system. And I'm going to convert this to a flat mount system like this. So basically, we chop this down, put it inside this, and we hook it up to a 12 volt converter system and then we plug in this into our red arc system which then we'll add a button down here so we can turn on the starlink and turn it off at the press of a button so flat mount kits up i've got there i've converted the ends um which are waterproof ends which go into my jack which i've also converted and that runs down and underneath um, the chassis up under in here. Probably can see the cable right there behind. And then through the body and I've um, sicker flexed the end so no water can get through. Basically come in here, through under the bed and into this adapter here, into my PoE injector. So this unit here basically replaces this. Um, in terms of the power. So the Wi-Fi, I'm not using part of this. I've got my own Unify system here, which I'm going to be running the Wi-Fi off. But the power this normally injects from the 240 is now being done by 12 volt. And I can basically, we'll be able to basically turn on Starlink by just pressing that button there. When I turn that on, you'll see the unit turns on and injects power. So I can basically decide when I want Starlink to work or not. If I have just this on, this will turn on the 4G. Um, and essentially if I've got 4G signal, I'll be able to use the internet. If I don't, well then yeah, I basically flick that on. This will power up and turn on the Starlink. Um, Starlink, oh sorry, Starlink in, 12 volt in, and ethernet out, which goes into my 4G system in the cabin. Uh, kind of whole point of this is that I could just leave this going and turn it on and off when I need it in a, like a cleanish setup. Uh, I have been dubious about how this will affect signal coming in over here, but I did a test last night and right where it is there, it seems to be pretty happy. Um, I woke up this morning after 12 hours of running it and it gave me um, no obstructions or anything like, or it gave me a few small obstructions, but nothing, nothing major. It reported back there was technically no obstructions. I did think about mounting it on this side because this is a non-passing traffic side. The problem is with that, the fridge is here and I'd have to then cut into the insulation, which I didn't want to do. Uh, where the other side, it's actually just a um, through and through. So I'll easily be able to put a bolt and some silicon and seal it up. So that's the reason why I went traffic passing side. I still haven't bolted this in yet. So at the moment, it's just sitting um, on there, just deciding whether or not I really want to do this or not. <laughs> cutting into a new pan um put a couple of holes in but i'm just going to put some m8 nuts through some silicon it should be fine uh worst case scenario if we get leaks in there i'll have to seal it from the inside as well but it should be fine i think it'll be all right uh i made this extra long in future provisions that i don't know i might maybe my friends will end up getting flat mats and if they do and there's a better signal we can actually connect it to a portable one um, or someone else's flat mount. Or you can just plug another RJ45 cable and extend it. I did also think in the future that I might make this, um, like I might be able to actually chain, uh, make it a removable mount. So these kits come in a way you can just tilt them and then just disconnect them. Uh, and then I, I could probably place it on there for better signal. I did think of a way to try and mount it up here, but it just looked terrible, didn't like it, and I didn't trust it. Uh, at least mounting it on here with six bolts, uh, into the front box, it's not going anywhere. But overall, pretty happy with it. It looks great. Like this will basically hide in behind here, and this will hide in behind here, and you won't even see that. Um, and this cable will be looped up behind in there. Now, this I don't know what the story is with this. This is uh, like a some type of magnetic thing that was on the Starlink cable. Don't know what it does. Um, it could be a stopper just to stop cable from coming out i'm not sure so i've just put it back on 
for testing and I'll remove it and see if it makes any difference. And I've also put a cable tie on the inside where this has come out here. So this cable can't be pulled out. But fingers crossed, we'll see how it goes. Testing, worst case scenario, if this doesn't work, uh, I might have to raise this a little bit. I don't know. It's all testing, experimenting for now. Well, been a little bit busy today getting other stuff done, but we finished off the Starlink. That's its mounted itself. We did silicon the inside up as well, just to make sure where we mounted it doesn't leak. Um, in here, box units down the back. Pretty much Starlink is on currently as we speak, because that's the Starlink there. I just turned that on and turn it off. And looks like we're doing pretty good. I mean, we're drawing about 4.2 amps with a router running as well. So that's uh, it's not too bad, given um, what we're running in here. If I turn everything else off, so it's just the Starlink and the router. There you go. The router and Starlink 3.7 floating at 12 volts. Well, actually, it's more like at 13.3 volts, but it's not bad. You always can be proud of how much you can get in an adventure.